Let's stand and sing. I search the world, but it couldn't fill me. Man's empty praise and treasures of fame are never enough.
You may be seated. Man, it's so exciting to be here tonight. I cannot believe it. It's been hard to contain my excitement the last few weeks as we've gotten closer and closer to this night. But this is a night to celebrate what God has done and to say thank you, Lord, and thank you to all the people that God has allowed to be part of this process. And so first of all, I just want to thank you. I want to thank you for your support along the way, for your encouragement along the way, and for your sacrificial giving. We started a campaign in 2018 called the Greater Campaign. And on the beginning of that campaign, pledges were turned in for a little bit over $800,000. And to date, we've received $840,000 to the Greater Campaign. So give God the glory for that. For those of you that don't understand, our annual budget is about a million dollars. And that is in addition to a million dollars a year that has been given by you an extra $840,000. And what that did for us was allow us to secure the loan that we needed to be able to get this project all the way through. There was points where we thought, well, maybe we'll just do the next-gen building and we'll be, have to wait a while. But then even in the middle of a pandemic, unbelievable, you all were faithful. And I am so thankful to each one of you. You guys don't know, and the staff, we are so thankful Sometimes we just like pinch ourselves, like, I can't believe this is happening, we're here. And, you know, one of the things that we can't wait for is for not having every other row taped off, you know. Like tonight when we dreamed about this night, it was packed because we could pack it out and nobody would be afraid to come. And we look forward to that day. I'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment. But tonight I want to say thank you to some people in particular. Uh, first of all, I want to recognize the people at the Kaiser Design Group. Would you guys stand right there? Could we... You guys there in the front row? Yeah. Yeah. We have uh, Dan Kaiser and Joe Pax and Ken Grosky with us tonight. Ken's a part of our church. Sometimes he's the guy behind the drums. But he's also an architect. And these three guys, along with some others at their firm, were the, the brains behind the design. And the things that I'm hearing from people in the community is about how beautiful our building looks from the road. I've even heard it's the best looking building in Pickerington now. So thank you guys so much. Thank you for being here tonight. We appreciate you and all the work that went into figuring out how it's all going to work together. And of course, we changed our minds a few times along the way and figured it out. But it is awesome. And so thank you. Also, I want to talk about our builder for a moment, Elevated Integrity. So they built our offices onto the building and then we hired them to build the next-gen building and to do our renovation. And they're an awesome company. Uh, the president, Aaron Carroll, couldn't be here tonight because he's uh, on a job. But the guy who has been our supervisor here of this project is here tonight. And Chad Kilbarger, will you stand here? This guy <laughs> has done an amazing job. The staff has kind of gotten, like, attached to Chad. He's been here for a year and a half every day with us, and he's gotten used to our jokes and our sarcasm, and he, I think he's figured us out finally after a year and a half, and we're going to be sad to see him go, but Chad has done a tremendous job, and boy, we've gotten a, a kind of a sneak peek behind the scenes of what it's like to supervise a project with all the different subcontractors of when they don't show up and when you got the pastor breathing down your neck saying, hey, we're having our grand opening. You better get it done. And he was painting uh, until an hour before you came today, touching up all the little marks we've made for him on the wall. So thank you, Chad, for doing a great job. And your family's here tonight. We appreciate you so much. But one of the things that's difficult in this process is, of course, the, the financial part of things. And when you are a church and you're trying to get a loan, it's not the easiest thing because banks look at you and they're like, uh, yeah, you raise all that money you say you're going to raise and then we'll talk to you. That's what normal banks do. So we were at that place we're wondering how long it was going to take before we'd actually start construction. And then I, I was talking to a friend of mine and Jack Kelton, would you stand up for a moment for me, please? Jack Kelton is the evangelism director for the State Baptist Association and he's a supporter of our church. He's been here many times for services for a long time. And uh, we've had breakfast and lunch together and just a great support. But he said, I, I know a guy uh, that's in Oklahoma and they have a lending institution that works directly with churches. And it's called Water's Edge. And let me connect you with this guy. 
And so he connected me with his friend Jerry, and we began to talk. Long story short is we were able to secure financing that we would have never got from a local bank or a national bank, but it's a bank that understands what pledges are all about and what you're doing. And so I just want to say thank you, Jack, for that connection, because we wouldn't be here tonight without you. So every month on a Saturday morning, I have a meeting um, with a group of elders. And these guys are just people that have been at our church for a while and have spiritual wisdom and understanding. And they meet with me and they help me make big decisions, uh, big vision type of things where we talk about financial things and how to handle big situations that our church is going through. And throughout the process of a campaign and building, they have been so critical, so crucial and so wise, and I appreciate them so much. And so if you're one of our elders and you're here, would you stand just for a moment? Please stand. I just want to recognize you tonight. Stay standing for a moment. Mike, Mike Lee, Ron Marshall, Craig Leskley, Greg Frost, Dirk Winkler, and Tommy Heater. I appreciate you guys so much. Thank you. You can be seated. Appreciate it. And I'm going to ask you, Ron, to stand again because you're what we would call a legacy member. And we have some people in our church that have been here from the beginning or for at least 20 years. And if you're one of the people that have been here for 20 years or more, would you stand for a moment? We're standing on your shoulders tonight. We're here because of you. Thank you so much. Stay standing, please. Thank you. Now, if you're not, if you're not one of the founding people, stay sit down, but the founders, if you were here, you guys were here at the very beginning. You were a couple seconds late, but you were almost at the beginning. And I, I see Shirley Deaver back there and her daughter Karen Blevins. You guys have been here from the very first service. Thank you so much. I'll tell on you, Shirley, because I know that you got a tour last week from Christy, and she said that you kind of broke down a little bit in tears just when you saw what God was doing here. So that means a lot to me to hear that. I appreciate that so much. And we're so thankful for you guys. I want to recognize um, somebody who's here tonight that used to be part of our staff. That was the original campaign director for the Greater Campaign. And he was a catalyst to push us forward with the whole process of building. Pastor Barry Peters, where are you? Would you stand for a moment? God brings people in your life at a right time, and I know that Barry was here for those four years to push us in the direction that we're going, and now he's pastoring as a lead pastor in Kentucky, and appreciate him so much. And then, you know, there's so many people that it takes, besides the paid staff and the elders, there's so many volunteers, and I want to thank all of you that have, we've had Saturdays where we've had volunteers running wire and doing other things like that to, to save money, not high voltage wire but low voltage wire we've run things like internet wire that type of thing so we've had people that have volunteered in different ways like that and we appreciate every single one of you um but tonight i have to call out somebody and uh, i know they don't like this kind of attention but i need to call them out because we have one volunteer who has basically been working here full time for the last two months for free and his expertise in the world of audio is unbelievable and he has basically helped us build things from the ground up here, and uh, this is like a baby to him, but we appreciate Wayne Falk so much. He's back there on the sound booth. <laughs> and like I said, all of our volunteers, every single one of you, we thank you so much, and I know um, it's been a weird time in this year of COVID to to volunteer and people are nervous. We hope that our volunteer base will come back. I know um, the children's ministry and the greeting ministry, it's a little scary for some people, but we're looking forward to when, you know, we get there. We're looking forward to all that coming back and we thank you so much for that. We're honored tonight to have our mayor. Lee, would you come up on stage with us? We have the mayor of Pickerington here with us tonight. So uh, Mayor Lee Gray, is a, he's a friend of mine. He's a friend of pastors in, in Pickerington. And a few years ago, some of you participated in the prayer walk that we went and 
downtown Pickerington, walked around and prayed at different locations. And there's not many cities that have a, a mayor that would organize something like that, but he was the one that reached out to all the pastors, and we had about 25 pastors having lunch together and planning out a prayer walk for our town. So this is a, a mayor that loves God and wants to see churches flourish in our community. And so I invite him tonight, and I thank you, Lee, for coming tonight to share a word with us. Steve, I appreciate that. I don't know if uh, many of you know this, but I was actually mayor from 1992 to 1999. So what that means is I was mayor when the church started. And actually was here uh, back in that time frame uh, visiting with my wife. Uh, so that, that dates myself, how old I am. The, um, and I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to be nice. It was great that you had a building to worship in, and that's all that matters, a place to worship. <laughs> but wow, what you guys have done. <laughs> I mean, it's no joke. I'm the same way. I go by and I think, wow, how did they do that? So whoever, you guys, fantastic. And the times I've seen Steve, he's been excited. He wanted to take me a tour, take me around and show me everything. It's just incredible what you've done here. Now, what I want to say is, you know, Christmas time is coming coming up it's proven fact the easiest time that you can get somebody yes to come to church well i was sitting there i was thinking not only do you guys have that but you can also say we just we just remodeled and did a whole new thing you got to come see it so the this time now it's time to do the work right i mean bring them in invite them get them here preach preach there's there's a lot of new people moving to pickerington make sure they end up in these seats that's right. This, uh, that's, that's, the, that's the end objective, isn't it? That's all. That's what it's about. People say, well, there's a lot of churches in Pickerington. I say, yeah, and they're all having a lot of success. It would be fantastic if everybody in Pickerington was a Christ follower. Thank so you. that's the mission. That's the mission. And, and you guys are doing a great job. And uh, like I said, this is super fantastic. Now, one of the cool things you get to do as mayor is I can make a proclamation, and I'm so glad to be here and be a part of this building dedication in 25 years, in 25 years. So I would like to read this if I could, Steve. Please. Whereas Sycamore Creek Church is celebrating its 25th anniversary and new building dedication ceremony, whereas Sycamore Creek Church was started by a small group of people in 1995 and for several years met at a Pickering shopping plaza before locating to its current home at 8100 Refugee Road where Sycamore Creek Church has seen steady growth over the years and now has more than 600 people in attendance each week. Whereas the church recognized the need for expansion and a next generation building was constructed and the existing worship center was expanded, where Sycamore Creek has used this building to serve the Pickerington community in many ways over the years, including blood drives, food drives, sponsoring families in need through the Angel Tree and countless other service projects and endeavors, now, therefore, I, Lee A. Gray, Mayor of the City of Pickerington, in concurrence with City Council, hereby recognize Sycamore Creek Church on the occasion of its 25th anniversary in building dedication and wish continued success for years to come. Thank you very much. Thank you, Lee. Thank you. Pastor. Thank you. I'm going to ask our staff if you all would come and join me here on the stage. Are you guys coming? There you go. I'm going to ask my wife to take this and hold this one. So one of the things that we advertised um, that we had coming up, and you saw maybe in the foyer, was our new merch wall. And so as the staff is coming up, they're actually models tonight. Every single one of us is wearing a different piece of new merchandise that you can purchase. All right, And actually, we get to give one away that looks just like us. Jared thought he wanted to give his own shirt away. And we're like, no, keep it on. All right. Um, we're going to give you one. Actually, Jared is wearing a t-shirt that um, we're giving away to everybody on Sunday. So if you come for Sunday, you get the free t-shirt. There it is. Uh, all of our designs are a little different than they used to be. It's kind of cool, a little, little bit different. So my design here is, uh, it says Hope is Here, and on the back it has our slogan there. Reach, um, what is it? Changing the world by changing lives. It's on the wall out there in the foyer. You know, I was doing good. All right, so anyway, I wanted to just take a moment here. Andrew Johnson's our discipleship pastor, and he's been here for a little bit over a year. And 
after, after Barry left, he, he was hired and jumped right in and is doing a great job. Small groups, it's kind of tough this year, and online ministry, trying to figure all that out. But uh, he's modeling for us a hooded tee, a hooded tee, kind of a cool thing. Right? He says, a hooded long sleeve tee. That's not the best look for you, but it's cool. All right, that's good. All right. So you can buy that out there. And you want to throw yours out? Who wants it? Oh, there you go. All right. All right. All right. Uh, Mitch Frost here is our student pastor since February. You know, but he's actually been here 20 years. Longer than me. Yeah, actually, yeah. His whole life he's been at this church, and now he's our student pastor. And uh, he's doing an awesome job, and he's wearing one of our uh, T-shirts of comfort colors. And it says, there's no place I would rather be than Sycamore Creek. And there's a little icon of where Pickerington is in the state of Ohio. So who would like one of those nice shirts? Oh. <laughs> and then down here. Amy Shaw is wearing our crew neck t-shirt, I mean sweatshirt, crew neck sweatshirt. And Amy has been on our staff for over 15 years as our children's minister. And she is just doing an incredible job. And it's been a lot this year to figure out how to do it in a pandemic. And I just appreciate her so much. She gets taken for granted, I think. And we appreciate Amy. And you're doing a tremendous job. And anybody want a crew neck new sweatshirt? You might not have to get closer. Oh, good. All right. All right. Well, um, this lady next to me just celebrated her 21st anniversary on staff this week. And that's, that's a long time. You've been, you've been through all four pastors, and I am your favorite. I've been confirmed. <laughs> um, so anyway, um, we appreciate all the work that Christy has done behind the scenes to get us to this point. And I'll just give her a little bit of credit here. If you like the colors in the foyer and the design of the foyer, it was all her choices. And she did a great job on that. And it's awesome. And all that you see, I mean, just working to the last minute to get to this point. We appreciate you so much. And you are wearing our hooded sweatshirt. It says, no place I'd rather be. Kind of the same as Mitch's shirt, but it's a sweatshirt with a hood. Anybody want a hoodie? All right. How big of an arm do you got tonight? I know, I know. It's been... Uh, I, that's that's what I do. All right. All right. Oh yeah, I forgot to give mine. Who wants the T-shirt like me? I mean, I know you do. Okay, I see. Oh man, they die really. Oh, oh, that's in the in a row with nobody. Nobody's diving and jumping for it. All right. All right. Oh, last but not least, let me just say a word about um, the person here to my right. So this guy is our worship leader, Jared Hudson, and he's talented, and you see that every week. But, but hold on a minute. Um, his talent goes way beyond the guitar and his voice. Uh, this guy has incredible talent and skills in areas that you would not know, like construction and organization and administration. And what he has done is taken this building on as like his baby. He has three girls, little girls at home and a wife. And he has spent so much time here dedicating himself to making this happen. You would not, I can't even explain it. I told him I basically owe you an extra day off for the whole year of 2021. He has spent so many hours here. And um, I just, I know there's just no way to tell you how much we appreciate you. But we should tell Lisa Kay because she's been home alone a lot. But we appreciate you too. We thank you so much for the sacrifice you've made to have this guy here Night after night after the last two months, I'm not kidding. He's been here almost every night doing stuff. And so we want to give you something, Jared, that you're not going to love. But we want to give it to you anyway. We have a gold construction hat for you. It says SCC Construction. All right. And the most important part is on the back. It says retired. Because no longer are you a construction worker or manager you are now a retired worship, you're a worship leader now, associate pastor of worship. Look at this guy. All right. You might not want to play with that, but anyway, can you give our staff a hand? Thank you guys so much. I got the best people working here. I love these people. Yeah. They're amazing. They're amazing, and God has given us them and some part-time staff, too, that help us to get our job done. We appreciate them so much. We're going to ask you, if you don't mind, stand up. We're going to sing two more songs. I'm going to have like a short five-minute message, and we're going to close out 
a little bit around eight, maybe a few minutes later. All right, so thank you for um, being a part of this tonight. Stand up, let's worship together.
all that matters. That's why we're here. The name of Jesus. Let's pray together.
God, we come before you in, in this moment, God, and we stand in your presence, Lord, and we, Lord, we have the privilege to use the things that you give us, Lord, but we do it all without a building. And Lord, we do it all without music. Lord, we do it all without words. Lord, we stand in your presence. We stand in the stillness before you. In all of your glory and wonder. Lord, you're the reason we're here. You're the reason we sing. You're the reason we laugh. You're the reason we cry. You're the reason we celebrate. And God, tonight we give you all the glory and the praise and the honor. All in the name, the powerful, beautiful name of your son, Jesus. Amen. You may have a seat. Up on the screen, I'm going to put a timeline for you. Some of you may recognize this a little bit from our greater brochure. But we are excited to see what God has done in bringing us to this point as we dedicate our building tonight. I wanted you to see the history of the church. In 1995, it was mentioned that we had our first service in the Pickerington Square Shopping Center where Giant Eagle is today. And then this property that we're on was purchased in 2001. 78 acres. The plan at the very beginning was to sell a large portion of it off, but then the real estate market tanked and the church was stuck with a lot of land and a lot of debt. And then in 2002, this building was built, the original building, and then multiple lead pasture transitions. Um, I'm thankful that I was called here in 2011. In 2012, and that year, Jared and I, we went back on the back part of the property where there was a golf course and got his iPhone out and videoed me. And we talked about that one day, God was going to allow us to sell this land or do something to reach more people in a greater way for the kingdom of God. Some of you may remember seeing that amateur video that we shot that day and posted for everybody. And little did we know in 2012 that a few years later we'd be approached by a buyer out of the blue. And in 2016 we sold 63 acres. And actually when I was standing on that land, according to the video, some of you are actually living on houses now that are in that neighborhood right behind the church. But that allowed us to be able to pay off some of our debt and to build our new office building that's attached to our building. And then in 2018, we began the Greater Campaign. Just a little over two years ago, in October of 18, is when it really launched. And then here we are in 2020. I tell you, I don't know if I knew it was going to happen that quick. There was a belief and a vision for it. But you know what? It was all about what God did. It was about God allowing the pieces to fall into place. And I think that all along God has known this is the night we'd be here celebrating what he's done and he's preparing us for what's coming ahead. And I hope that you can see what I see and that you can hear what I hear. You can feel what I feel because what I see is post-COVID, this place just packed with people without masks, worshiping God for who he is. Are you excited about that? I can't wait for that. I know that most of us just can't wait for that freedom because I'm with you standing over there singing with the mask hard. And I know that you want to just express yourself even greater to a God that is so good. That's what I see. I hear the buzz of kids coming out of that next gen hallway excited about what they've learned about Jesus. I'm excited about the buzz of our students filling that, that room up on Sunday nights at the well and just having an overflow of teenagers coming to know Christ here at our church. I'm excited about the fact that you don't, most of you don't know that this room off here to my left, we have a green room over here, but over here we haven't been able to use it in the way we're going to use it. It's going to be a care room for people that at the end of the service that want to make a decision for Christ and want to talk to somebody or pray with somebody. That room's going to be dedicated for that purpose. And we're excited to have a place for that because really what we're all about is about people making life-changing decisions for Jesus. That people change the course of their life by giving their faith and their trust to Jesus and they put their life in his hands. And that's really what it's all about. This building is awesome. I love this building, but we're not about building buildings. We're about building people. That's what it's about. That's what it's always been about. When we started the campaign, the greater campaign, the scripture that we based it on was from the words of Jesus himself. 
In John chapter 14, verse 12, Jesus said, I tell you the truth, anyone who believes in me will do the same works that I have done and even greater works because I am going to be with the Father. It's hard to believe Jesus would say we would do even greater works than him. But he says, because I'm going to be with the Father. And when Jesus went to be with the Father, you know what he did for us? He gave us the Holy Spirit to live in each and every one of us who are followers of Christ. And because we have the Holy Spirit in us, we have the power to do even greater things and reach even greater numbers of people for the kingdom of God. And so God has put us here in this place for this time. And our leadership team is so excited. Our staff, I tell you what, we are so excited to move out of construction mode and into full-time ministry mode once again. Now, I know there's been ministry going on the entire time, but I would lie to you if I didn't say that our minds and our hearts have been divided and we've been kind of strained between construction and ministry and all that's been going on. So we can't wait to envision the future and what God has for us in 2021 and beyond. It's going to continue to be about changing the world and changing lives one at a time. I want to close tonight just by sharing with you as I was thinking about what to share from 1 Kings chapter 8. I was like, wow, Old Testament, yeah. There was this story of King David, and he had this vision for building this temple, a place for people to come and worship God. And the vision didn't come to fruition while he was alive. But you know his son, Solomon, Solomon completed the temple. And when the temple was complete, like we have this building complete tonight, he called the congregation, the nation of Israel, to come. And they had a time of dedication. And Solomon got down on his knees before the people, and he prayed this amazing prayer. And he prayed several things. He prayed that God would continue to keep his promises as he has, and he recognized who God is. He also prayed that this temple would become a house of prayer where people would come and pray and where God would continue to answer prayers. And the things that Solomon prayed, I want to pray. And he prayed also that this temple that they had dedicated that day would be a place where people from all over the world, all over the nations, they would hear about it, and they would hear about the great name of their God. That's what Solomon prayed. And that's what I want us to pray tonight. But after he finished praying, Solomon stood up and with a loud voice, the Bible says he blessed the entire congregation of Israel. And I want to read that blessing for you tonight. It's a blessing and it's an encouragement and it's a charge for each one of us. Because like our mayor was saying tonight, this is the beginning. This is the opportunity. Christmas is coming. This is the opportunity for us to use the tool that God has given us, this building, to reach our community. That's what this is all about. I'm going to ask our eldest elder, <laughs> who's been here from almost the beginning, to come to the stage. And Ron is going to pray our prayer of dedication in just a moment. As he comes, I want to read to you what Solomon said as a blessing over the people. And I share this blessing and this encouragement and this charge with you tonight from 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 56. Solomon said, Praise the Lord who has given rest to his people Israel, just as he promised. Not one word has failed of all the wonderful promises that he gave through his servant Moses. Listen to verse 57. Solomon said, May the Lord our God be with us as he was with our ancestors. May he never leave us or abandon us. May he give us the desire to do his will in everything and to obey all the commands and the decrees and the regulations that he gave our ancestors. Verse 60. Then people all over the earth will know that the Lord alone is God and there is no other. In verse 61, he concludes by saying, And may you, the congregation, be completely faithful to the Lord our God. May you always obey his decrees and commands just as you are doing today. I charge you as Sycamore Creek Church with that same charge that Solomon gave the congregation of Israel. Be faithful to God. Obey his commands. And watch God use every single one of you to enlarge his kingdom. Ron, would you come and pray a prayer of dedication? And after you pray, the band's going to come and close us with a song of celebration. Um, is this on? Everybody hear me yeah. fine? Uh, I'll just say this, that uh, I came, 
a few months, short months, uh, when Shirley Deeper and, and that group, of, uh, small group of uh, uh, believers came together to start a new church. They didn't have a name then either. Um, and I came just a few weeks, maybe like a month or so later, and there were a small group of people, about what fits right up here with the uh, winkers up front here is a small five or six, maybe ten of us. And um, here we are. This is amazing. Reminded of a verse that says, I has not seen nor ears heard, nor entered into the heart of man the things of God has prepared for those who love him, mm -hmm. for those who are called according to his purposes. And um, that's a blessing, to just those words to say that. So um, let me pray. He said, he, he said I had two minutes, and he, know, he knows I don't normally speak much, but this could be a long time, right? <laughs> Just kidding. Um, you know, back in that day, Shirley's day, and I came a little bit after that, there was a consecration done and a dedication to create something that God wants, wanted to do. It was all the Lord. So let us pray, as we, they did in that day, with that same firm um, faith and belief that God will do what he will do. So let's pray. Holy Father, Holy Father, we truly did not vision this. We thought something. We were thinking of people's lives and, and the building, but, uh, and so many people have received you through this ministry. And we thank you for it. Lord, we, we do, as a people with one heart, ask you, Lord, to bless this place. We offer it in dedication to you and you alone, to your holy name. We set this aside, this place aside, just for you, Lord, for you to worship you, to honor you, to see lives changed, that our world and desperately needs you would change also, Lord. So we ask you, Father, bless this place. Ask you, Father, that when a person enters this place, they'll feel and sense your presence, your love that they, you have for each one that would enter this place, we ask. We ask this blessing knowing that it's not in our, not in our, our power, but it's all your power that brought us to this place, and we are humbled, truly humbled by it. So we thank you, thank you Father, for this, and beyond words of, words of gratitude, they can't express how we feel, but we ask you, Lord, to receive this pledge, this consecration, this dedication to what you have put before us. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Sing together. You give your life for mine, nailed to the cross, you crucified. All my sin and shame was washed by your mercy. You are the treasure I find, my reason for living.
sing this together. We lift up our hands. I lift my hands up, lead my whole life down, my whole life down before you.
What an incredible, incredible night. We're just so thankful that you guys could all be a part of it with us. And I'm sure there's probably a ton of people watching online as well. We're thankful that you guys are tuning in online. And we hope that everybody is continuing to stay safe and do their part um, to contain this virus. Listen, we want to make you aware of this Sunday. It's going to be, um, technically it will be our grand opening. We're, we're going to start a brand new Christmas series um, that is very appropriate um, for this time and this season and this year called A Weary World Rejoices. We have reason to celebrate no matter what's going on Amen. around us. And we're excited to do that. And we're excited that we have this great, shiny new building to rejoice in. And um, we're not going to let anything hold us back. So even all of you watching online, we hope that you're sitting in your living room singing along with us. And we hope that you're enjoying this brand new series starting Sunday. So you guys can go ahead and sign up um, if you haven't already online for that. And also, uh, we want to make you aware of our Christmas Eve services. So soon, I think maybe, I'm not sure, Monday, um, we're going to uh, open up sign up for our Christmas Eve services. We're going to have service on the 23rd at 7 p.m. and then on the 24th, I believe at 3 and 5 p.m., I'm not 100% sure. I see a shaking head, so I think that's yeah, uh, uh, right. But, um, but as the mayor said, that's a great time to invite. We're going to have three services, so there'll be extra space for you to safely invite friends and family. Um, but anyway, we're so, so, so thankful that you guys shared tonight with us. That's all we have for you. So be safe going home. Enjoy the night, and we will see you guys on Sunday morning. You're dismissed.